For a long time, humans have generally fantasized about an exploration and possible colonization of Mars. As a matter of fact, this fantasy is edging to reality, as several agents are planning to send people there in the coming years. However, simply transporting people across miles of space between Mars and Earth seems to be the least of the worries for the Red Planet. Like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends as I walk you through the dangers of living on the Red Planet. Let's begin. NASA has plans to put astronauts on Mars by 2030, and Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, said he will send people there by 2026. While the agencies with interest in Mars have found sustainable solutions to the transportation of people to the Red Planet, no one's really given a clear plan on how people will survive on the Red Planet. Upon arrival, humans will without a doubt need to overcome enormous obstacles to sustainably achieve life on Mars, a perhaps frigid and desolate rock. On Mars, water is locked in rocks and under sand, therefore it's very difficult to reach. As you rightly know, water is quite essential to humans on the Red Planet, and they will surely need it for survival. Some of the most recent evidence has shown that a lake of about 12 miles across is hidden a mile below the South Pole of Mars. More reports from scientists revealed eight regions on the Red Planet where erosion had revealed large sections of ice deposits, stuck around 100 meters below the surface of Mars. Furthermore, scientists analyzed data from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and they reported that they found a large layer of ice under the sand buried close to a mile between Mars's North Pole. Importantly, the technology to extract water locked in the discussed Martian soil isn't in existence yet. However, NASA and other interested agencies are most likely developing methods to tackle this problem efficiently. In one of our previous videos, I mentioned how Elon Musk's boring company could effectively dig for water on the Martian surface. On Earth, the company itself bores tunnels that would aid traffic congestion. NASA, on the other hand, has a Mars Ice Challenge, which is aimed at university engineering students, where 10 finalists are selected to complete at Langley Research Center in Virginia. At the research center, they showcase their prototypes designed to retrieve water from simulated Martian subsurface ice. Lasting solutions have not been finalized, and until they do, it will most definitely be difficult to survive on the Red Planet. NASA formed several partnerships to advance mining technologies for use in space, and a notable one is with the Australian Space Agency. As final conclusions have not yet been reached, it's important that I add that NASA once showed off a prototype spacecraft called the world is not enough, which is sized like a microwave. Its design allows it to mine soil on asteroids, extract water from the soil, and further use it to routinely make streams to propel itself onto its next mining target. The technology might as well be adapted to harvest water for Mars exploration. As a matter of fact, once a solution has produced enough water for human sustenance on the red planet, the thin layer of atmosphere of our inhabitable solar neighborhood cannot be compared to what supports us on Earth. Some experts have even concluded that the atmosphere is made of the wrong gases for human consumption. According to NASA, the red planet's atmosphere is mostly comprised of carbon dioxide, which is 95.3% compared to less than 1% available on Earth. The atmosphere barely has any oxygen, and as you rightly know, humans need oxygen to breathe. The oxygen contained in the Martian atmosphere is 0.13% compared to the 21% on Earth. Life on Mars will most likely be impossible without a heavy supply of air. As humans not only survive on air, plants as well do not just survive on being rooted into the ground. Plants need nitrogen to survive, and unless there is some way to generate it, we might have to deal with the 2.7% contained in the red planet's atmosphere compared with our 78% here on Earth. That isn't all about the atmosphere though. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is about 6.1 millibars low, compared with the 1,000 13.25 millibars of atmospheric pressure here on Earth. Pressure is very much pertinent to life on Earth, as tiny pockets of air trapped inside the body of a human could expand without enough pressure. Due to this, experts believe that water in the body could boil and eardrums could rupture. In space, where the atmosphere is loose, astronauts survive in pressurized suits, so when living on Mars, it will be no different. Also, according to NASA, due to the fact that the thin atmosphere allows any heat from the sun to escape into space, Mars' cold temperatures dip to a low of about minus 285 degrees Fahrenheit. Elon Musk has high hopes of having a metropolis strengthened by about 1 million humans on Mars, complete with everything from factories to breweries, stores, and casinos. Clear plans to achieve this have not yet been explicitly stated, but NASA themselves once touted building homes made of fungi on the red planet. 
underground bubbles might really come in handy here. Although intending Martians will first need to break the hard surface of Mars. Even as Mars is still the most habitable planet after Earth, it is still a difficult planet. On Mars, humans might even have to develop infrastructures to solve some problems that Earth itself handles automatically. As the reality of surviving on Mars is bleak to imagine, you shouldn't be surprised when a myriad of ready-made solutions are put in place once humans arrive there. Nevertheless, harmful radiations are highly present in the Martian air. In fact, harmful radiations permeate our cosmos as the Sun and other stars are fusion reactors which exude hefty amounts of electromagnetic energy, such as ultraviolet radiation and X-ray. The Sun, like other intensively energetic objects like quasars, also emit high-energy protons, atomic nuclei, as well as other particles that could result in radiation sickness. These adversely affect the person's central nervous system, increase the lifetime risk of developing cancer, and it could also go on to cause degenerative diseases. Lucky for us, Earth's magnetic fields create an almost invisible barrier against the radiation, and it diverts many of these electrically charged atomic fragments back into space. Experts have explained that most stray fragments are also further absorbed by the planet's thick atmosphere, and this places anyone outside the protective bubble at risk. A Mars mission could leave radiation doses against astronauts of about 700 times higher than what is on Earth. Future Mars explorations will present scientists and astronauts alike with a host of problems that could challenge human survival. One particular solution that could be considered to make Mars exactly habitable for Earthlings is if everything about the planet can be built from scratch. Radiation shields shouldn't necessarily be too graded as barriers made up of water and certain plastics can prove efficient. On a worthy note, the Martian planet may not provide sufficient protection from radiation and other dangers, especially in the case of a powerful solar flare aimed directly at Mars. A former NASA physician estimated that placing the fragile and fleshy human body behind or beneath about 9 feet of Martian soil should save a number of troubles. In the absence of other options, 3D printing technology could offer other alternatives to creating simple structures. NASA once held a 3D printed habitats challenge in 2019, when New York's AI Space Factory won the top prize for a system that was built of lightweight yet strong structures using autonomous robots that require almost no human guidance. Underground habitats or caves aren't exactly standard for agriculture which will sustain life on Mars. The locations essential for occupation have not yet been expressed, and many people even have the idea of geodesic glass domes being the answer. Interestingly, Mars provides all the required raw materials needed to create glass, metal, and plastics, which could come in handy in building these suggested domes. As a matter of utmost concern, access to water on the Red Planet will give occupants a chance to create oxygen, grow food, and produce fuel, including other raw materials. Perhaps a determined location of water will go a long way to determine where human presence will be first established. If terraforming becomes the only feasible solution, then there's little hope at the survival on the Red Planet. To maintain all the little, yet necessary life support systems on Mars, Elon Musk and other visionaries have long-term plans of expanding the habitable bubble to virtually every part of the planet. Terraforming the Martian planet will demand changing the planet's environment to be a reflection of Earth. Elon Musk once proposed nuking Mars's poles to release the massive amounts of greenhouse gases trapped in there to warm the planet up. One other method to sustainably occupy the planet involves importing methane, or ammonia, to begin the greenhouse effect. Sometimes this solution actually takes years to materialize, as it typically requires efforts and drains energy. Terraforming a new planet will be explosively costly, and it could take over a thousand years before humans negotiate the surface of Mars like they do Earth's surface. The idea of occupying Mars is quite fascinating. However, it will be very difficult for humans to live on the Red Planet. Major technological advancements have proven that most things that have been cancelled as achievable can in fact be achieved with enough time and persistence. With enough time, humans could be living their lives on the Martian surface. Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.